This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hi, I'm Cindy Harris. Welcome to the Photography Guild. Today we're going to be talking about how to organize our digital photos, but before we get started with that, I thought we should take just a moment and talk about how to get our photos into our computers. Well, you know, every camera comes with a USB cord nowadays, and so what a lot of people do is they plug the USB cord into their camera, plug the other end into their computer, and then they download the images from their camera into their computer, and it goes into some sort of uh, photo software like iPhoto or Aperture or Photoshop, something like that. Well, I, I wanted to share with you the way I get my photos into my computer. What I do is I use what's called a memory card reader. This is my memory card reader and you can pick one of these up for golly less than twenty dollars nowadays and they're such a great deal. You can see it has different slots for different size memory cards. Now what I love about this is I keep it on my desk like this and whenever I have photos, which for me is practically every day I'm taking photo photos of something, money shots for other podcasts or something, instead of plugging a cord in, all I do is pop my memory card out of my camera just like this and then I plug it into my memory card reader like this. And this is what happens. I've directed the memory card reader to access Aperture, which is the um, photo software that I use. And this morning I went out and um, a lot of my flowers are in bloom. So I wanted to go out and get some quick shots of them. So these are the images that were on my memory card. And so all I have to do is come into Aperture and I come down to here where it says import all. I click on that. They're going into my inbox, which we're going to talk about, and look at how fast it's already imported, the nine images. Then all I have to do is click eject card, and then boom, those photos that were in my camera are now on my in my inbox, which is a really fast and easy way to get your photos in. So you can see that using a memory card reader is a really quick way to get your images out of your camera. And then all you have to do is take the card out of the reader and uh, you'll notice that many times it'll say on your uh, screen, it'll ask you, do you want to eject the card or eject the card and erase the card? Think about just clicking the eject the card option because once you get your card out, they found that it's best if you put it right back into your camera, close it up, then go into the menu part of your camera, enter your utilities, and then scroll down to format and actually reformat the card in your camera. They found that that's really the best way of uh, getting the images off of that card. Now, if you make this all part of your workflow, every time you pick up your camera, you're going to have a fresh, clear SD card and you're ready to shoot away. So now that we have our images in our computer, let me give you some ideas on how you may want to organize them. So let me show you how I organize my photos. Now over here in the sidebar, these are where all of my folders and projects are. And one of the things that I try to do is I try to remember that my photo library is like a filing cabinet of images. So I set it up in a way that makes sense to me as if I were going to retrieve them out of a filing cabinet. Well, the first thing you will might want to think about setting up is an inbox. And this is a place where the images that come right out of your camera go to. So I took some images the other day here of my son at our um, studios and then here are the images that I just took and imported. So these are photos that I need to do something with. 
Now, the thing is, is you don't want to end up with like 3,000 photos in your inbox. Now, once you have your inbox, you're going to want to think about the easiest way to organize your photos within your library. Now, one of the things I'm going to suggest to you is your first level of organization be by year. So you can see I have 2008, 2009, and then 2010. So this is my current year. That way, all the photos that I've taken in 2010 are going to end up in this folder. Now, in this folder, what I've done is I've created some subfolders. Now, these are work for me. You have to see how they would work for you, but it's just some ideas. One of the things that I do is I have a folder of events, people, places, and projects and I do that for each year. Now under these things like for example events this would be things like somebody's birthday, somebody's wedding, Christmas, things like that. People would be the people in my life. My husband, my son, my friends, that kind of a thing. Then there's places under that I would have any kind of trips I take and then projects, which is obviously what I've been working on most since the beginning of the year. I've already created some subfolders or an aperture, they call them projects. And so one of the projects that I've created is my money shots. And these are all the photos that I've taken for my different podcasts. So they're all here. And then the other one that I have is the Photography Guild. And so these are some photos that I have been playing with for this show. So, um, Let's go back to our inbox and let's see where I can go about placing these photos. Now, let's look at these first series of photos that I took. This is my son over at our studio. Now, there's a couple of ways I could go with this. I could either have this be a place like studio shots, but I'm actually going to make this about Cameron. So I'm going to go into my people folder here and I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to go up here and create a new project and you can see um, it's untitled. So I'm going to call this Cameron and when I go back to my inbox, then I can take all these photos here and I'm going to um, select all of them and I'm going to drag them into the Cameron folder and as you can see they're immediately gone and out of my inbox. The next thing I want to do is get these um, images out of my garden. Now for me my garden is a place that's what I consider it so I'm going to click on places open up a new project there I'm going to call it garden and then that tells me that any shots I take of my flowers or anything that's going on out there, that's going to go into this project. So now I'm going to go back to my inbox. I'm going to select all the flower photos and I'm going to put those right into my garden. So now my inbox is clear, but I do want to do a little more work on these two uh, projects that I just created. So let's first go back to my first one, which was Cameron. Now, one of the things you may want to think about adding whenever you bring photos into your filing system is adding what they call metadata. And that's this little box up here. And in Aperture, the metadata is what the aperture setting was, what your ISO speed was, what your shutter speed was. Well, there are some other things you can add to your metadata like keywords. And let me show you why this is kind of interesting. I'm going to look at this photo right here. I'm going to double click it and make it bigger. And um, I'm going to look and see now, is there any kind of interesting keywords I'd like to add to this? Well, for one thing, I'm going to add Cameron's name because he's in it. I'm going to put that it was at Bay 6, which is the name of our studio. And then I'm also going to put in range because that is the uh, show that he was filming at the time. And I'm going to put that as the keyword. Now that I'm going to go back to my browser here. So in this photo, 
all this information is going with it. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can rate this photo. So let me open it back up again. It's an okay photo. Um, in Aperture, they have this little green check mark here and you click on it and you'll notice over here there's a star system. So it's like, how many stars? Well, the first click is that's a five star photo. Well, I wouldn't consider that a five star photo, but I can go over here to my little red arrow I'd say it's maybe like a two star photo and I'd leave it just like that. And then I'll go back and put it back into my browser. I'm gonna go through and do the metadata on all the photos here. And again, I'll show you, I just click on them and it automatically, once I type in a couple of words, it auto fills, which is really neat. Now, some people do a lot of tagging like this, um, but you need to do what feels right for you. Okay, so all of these have been tagged. So let me show you how tagging and using metadata can be really handy with photo organization. Let's say that um, I was looking at some other photos and it came up that I needed to get a photo of Cameron. Well, what I can do is go into my library and in Aperture, they have a little um, magnifying glass here, which is like a search field. And in comes this little search field box and what I can do in here is I can type Cameron's name and hit return and now anything that has been tagged with Cameron comes up and so that is a really handy thing so you don't have to have images in multiple locations you just need to use your search field and you can pull them up so let's look at the structure of our photo library. The first thing we need to do is to create our inbox. And this is where our initial photos come in and are waiting to be sorted. Our next level is going to be the year. And since we're in 2010, we'll, we'll start there. And as you go back and want to reorganize photos, this is a good place to start is with the year. Then we're going to create some other subfolders under the year. We're going to go with things like people, places, events, and projects. Now, under people, the names of your family, um, your children, you know, however you like to categorize that and put in however many you'd like. Places could be things like a city you visit. It could also be um, a place in your home. Like for me, it would be a place like my garden. Then we have events. And this would be things like birthdays and Christmas, things like that. And then we have projects. Now that can mean a lot of different things um, depending on who you are and what you're about. Uh, maybe you have a project that are your shots of the photography guild. Maybe you wanna have those in a separate place. Whatever works for you, but this is a great simple system for getting your photo library organized and ready to go. So our assignment is to start organizing those photos. Now, if you've never organized your photos, don't take it all in one big chunk. It gets very overwhelming. Start with 2010. We're only three months into that. And uh, then promise yourself that each time you upload some new photos, that you will uh, put them in your inbox and get them sorted out. And then little by little, you can go back and look at the myriad of other photos photos and just take them a little bit of time and in, in no time you'll have them all organized. Well, as you uncover some awesome photos, don't forget to share them with us by going to our page on Flickr. Um, remember, you can go to our website, go to the Photography Guild show notes, and uh, we have a little menu bar there that has iTunes and our RSS feed and Flickr. And if you click on that, it'll take you right to our Flickr page where you can upload your photos. This last month, we had a whole bunch of new people um, and they submitted some amazing amazing photos. So thank you guys so much. It's so inspirational uh, to see what people are doing. 
Now next time we're going to be looking at food photography. I've been getting a lot of emails recently, people asking me about how I do um, the food styling photos that I take for the other podcasts. This type of photography is really interesting, um, not only for casual things like if you wanted to add them to a cookbook or recipes, things like that, but I've used it a lot when I travel because when you travel different places around the world, you're presented with many times the most beautiful uh, dishes and it's great if you have your camera there, you can really learn how to take some great photos of them and then that way you never forgot what you ate when you were there. For more information on this episode, go to our website and visit the Photography Guild show notes. Also, if you have any questions or ideas, send us an email. Thanks for watching.